I warn you and I warn myself from something that's very, very easy to do right now. It's a subtle point, but it is extremely dangerous. And that is focusing on the problem itself. See, one of the most powerful stories to me is the story of Musa alayhi salam in front of the Red Sea. I feel like within this story, there is like, it's like a narrative that explains our whole condition and the reactions that we have when we are faced with challenges. And, you sh and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us in this story, he, he compares and contrasts the reactions of different people to the same external event or the same external obstacle. فَلَمَّا تَرَى الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ When these, when Musa alayhi salam is now trying to escape Pharaoh, there's a Pharaoh following behind with his army. And now him and his people are faced, in, they're in front of the Red Sea. And there's an army behind them. And this is a superpower army. And they're a group of slaves. And now they're put in this very, very difficult situation. Do we find ourselves in a difficult situation just now? Yeah, kind of. We have only a couple more days, right? We are in a very difficult situation. And when the two, Allah says, when the two groups saw each other, the people of Musa, قال أصحاب موسى إنا لمدركون. The people of Musa السلام, said, we will indeed be overtaken. That's exactly, exactly how many of us felt after the last election. We indeed will be over, إنا لمدركون. And that's a very natural reaction to being stuck in front of the Red Sea with a superpower army behind you. It's a natural reaction that we had. But I want to tell you something amazing, and that is the reaction of Musa alayhi salam. In that same exact situation, he's looking at the same situation, but his basira, his, his heart is looking at and focused on something else. Qala kalla. He said, no. By no means. The word kalla, as you know, is a very emphatic no way, absolutely not. Qala kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdim. Indeed, my Lord is with me and he will guide me through this. The reason why I love this story so much is because this story isn't just a story. It's awesome, it's something we tell our kids, but it isn't a bedtime story. It is a sign, and Allah actually continues to say in the ayah that indeed in this is a sign, but most people don't get it. Most people don't understand. It is, you and I are never going to be in front of a large body of water with an army behind us, but we are going to be put in situations where we feel trapped, and we are gonna be put in situations where we don't see a way out, and we, and we feel that way just now. We feel feel that way politically. We feel that way socially to a large degree. But what's so powerful here is how, how was Musa salam able to respond in that way? How was he able to say, no, we will not be overtaken. No, I'm not going to be shaken. We're, I'm, not even, I'm not even worried that we're gonna be overtaken. Why was he able to do that? And the answer is because his focus was not on the problem. His focus was not on the, the Red Sea and his focus was not on the army. His focus wasn't on Trump. His focus was on Allah. His focus was that no, no, inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen, my Lord is with me. And if Allah is with you, you don't have to worry. He will guide me through. Allah is teaching us a timeless lesson. We're gonna be put in situations where we feel trapped. That's a, that's, a, that's a promise. We're gonna be put in situations that look impossible. And what also strikes me about his story is that he didn't know how he was gonna get out of that situation. It's not like people were going around splitting seas. This wasn't like a regular occurrence. And yet he did not worry even though he didn't know how. See, for us, it's easy for us to say, oh, it's no problem because I got a plan, A, B, C, D. We know exactly how it's gonna happen. But when you don't have any idea how it's gonna happen and you still put your trust in Allah, that is tawakkul. He, he knew Allah is with me and he will guide me through. Now, now y'all are gonna say, but what about doing our part? I know I'm at mass. What about doing our part? And the reality is what's so beautiful about this story is that although, although obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was gonna save him, 
Allah still asked Musa Islam to take action. He's asked him to do something. He asked him to take his staff and strike the sea. And so he was still asked to take action. We are still asked to take action. Tawakkul and action are not separate. They have to go together. As the Prophet says, that you have to tie your camel and at the same time, your trust is in Allah. Don't think that they're separate. So often I hear this translated as, um, tie your camel and then put your trust in Allah. It's not, that's not what it says. It says, when the man was told by the Prophet ﷺ, tie your camel and put your trust in Allah, the two are simultaneous. We don't work and then depend on our work and depend on our deeds for results. No, we work and we depend on Allah for results. And that's a very, very important point. One of the things that happens a lot, and this is a pitfall that a lot of us activists fall into, is that we put our trust in our own activism. We put our trust in our own activism. And so what happens is when we don't see the exact results that we wanted, we lose hope. Inna la mudrakun. We have that attitude of we're going to be overtaken. But you see, if you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless of what you're seeing, you know that he's got your back. And that's what happened with Musa alayhi salam. He was told to strike the sea, so he's taking an action. But this is an important point. If I asked you right now, y'all are in, where am I now? Chicago, yeah? If I tell you to go take a large staff or a large stick and hit, you know, Lake Michigan, it's not going to split. Why? It is not his action which caused the result. Why did he strike the sea? Because it was Allah who told him to. It was part of his worship. Every single thing that we are doing of our activism should be part of our worship. But we should never believe that our opening, that our salvation, that we're going to be saved because of our actions, because of our activism. We don't get saved because of our activism. Activism. We get saved by Allah. And this is a very, very important point of our Tawheed. To understand it's only Allah who saves us. It's only Allah who provides the opening. He is Al-Fatah. He is Al-Fatah. I'm not Al-Fatah. You're not Al-Fatah. We're not as organizations Al-Fatah. We don't change our circumstances. Allah changes our circumstances. But here's a very important point about the formula for change. Yes, Allah is the one who changes our circumstances. But Allah also says that indeed Allah does not change the condition or the circumstances of a people until they change what's inside themselves. There is a job that we have to do. There is a striking of the sea that we have to do. But we have to at the same time never despair. We have to at the same time have the attitude of Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Indeed my Lord is with me and he will guide me through. This is extremely essential. And I will tell you this, if you are focused too much on the problem, you will have the reaction of Bani Israel. Because if all we talk about is the problem, if all we think about is the problem. If all we post about is the problem. If all we discuss is the problem. Then what happens is, and this is a psychological reality, whatever you focus on grows. Whatever you focus on grows. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to focus on dhikr. That the more that we focus on the remembrance of Allah, the bigger the importance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in our lives. But if we're focused on everything that's going wrong, if, we're f if our focus is on everyone who's saying this about us, and they're going to do this to us, and then this, and, and that's it. And that's my focal point. I promise you, we will fall into despair. And the reason for that is that the problem will actually grow because it becomes our focal point. And this is a dangerous thing that we fall into. Our focal point needs to be in Namaya Rabbi Sayahdeen. This is a very different focal point. The focal point of Musa alayhi salam. Indeed, my Lord is with me and he will guide me through. Yes, I do my part.
But while I'm doing my part, my heart is looking at Allah. My heart isn't looking at the problem. My heart isn't focused on what Trump is saying or what Trump isn't saying or what he's going to do or what he's not going to do. Yes, I do my part because it's part of my worship. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my focus. And when Allah is your focus, then you don't, you don't fall into despair because you know that Allah's got you. This is extremely important.